Hi guys, welcome back to Hear Me Out. I'm E. I'm D. And today we're going to review episode 12 of The Real Housewives of Potomac. The episode is called Blazed and Confused. So, disclaimer, nobody got blazed. <laughs> but, you know, but shots were fired here and there. So, we're going to talk about what happened on the episode. Of course, give you our opinions because we have many. And we'll go from there. So, um, the Real Housewives um, episode, doing the recap, this is from Vulture. Uh, the franchise is many things, serialized, true crime epic, not so secret canon of queer romance, vehicle for women to soft launch a divorce, but one of its more underappreciated functions is a platform for women to shield their products and business endeavors to the masses. Man, the way they write these things. The ladies are doing podcasts, pre-made cocktails, t-shirt lines, and lounge tours, and Potomac is no exception. In eight seasons, we have been competing candle, we have seen competing candle brands, restaurants, cosmetic lines, satin-lined hats, books, and franchises come and go and fail to launch. It is well understood that a trade-off for forfeiting your life to the whims and intrusions of the general public means that you are allowed to shamelessly integrate your wares into the season as a boon to your Bravo contract. The scenarios are often uh, contrived and unwieldy, but as long as the franchise offers um, enough entertainment between these quasi-infomercials, everyone can make do with the sponsored content. When a show like Potomac is in a rut, however, an episode dedicated almost exclusively to the women's various hustles lands with a thud. Half the main cast members have found a way to plug their financial investments this week. Wendy and Eddie are pushing their weed partnership. Giselle and Ashley are showing off their plan at Leisure Line. NECA is previewing her sparkling wine and Candace is highlighting her upcoming acting roles. Individually, all of this is fine in small doses. This season alone, we have seen Karen move to, into the resort business with her family estate. Wendy tried her hand at a talk show. And Robin franchises a facials business with varying degrees of success. Having all of these endeavors packed into one episode, however, feels like we are no longer watching reality TV, but 42 minutes of promotional materials with some petty fights in between. Not only are the uh, contrivances jarring, but they are simply uninspired and unengaging. Giselle and Ashley take us on a tour of a fabric shop and ruminate over polyester fabrics about how to account for coochie sweat. I don't even know if you could say that, but whatever. And camel toes. And I barely so much as chuckle as they wade through their endless array of tacky fabric selections. Giselle's daughter had the right or daughters had the right feedback in mind when they told their mother that their ideas sounded immensely juvenile. But despite their attempts to get GNA to correct course, we continue to see the duo purport to aim for Lululemon and land closer to LuLaRoe as they gossip about Karen's event in Surrey County. So before we continue... <laughs> Who is Lula Rose? Do we know that much? Never nope. heard of them. <laughs> I guess we have to uh, look it up. <laughs> and we'll do that throughout this uh, this show or episode. Yeah. But it is crazy. I, when they took me, <laughs> I'm saying me, when they took me to go to the fabric shop, I knew the episode was going to be a dud. <laughs> For more or less. Oh. Because really. Right. I mean, I, I can appreciate stuff being, you know, shown from the ground up, but fabric shops are overwhelming. Okay. The, too many patterns, too many colors, you know, and we know, how do I say this politely? Giselle and Ashley have no style. Ashley's style oh. is wear no clothes, basically. And Giselle. Right. You know, she's a beautiful woman, so she doesn't think she has to dress nice. So I'm not looking forward to this GNA loungewear. You know, if it was somebody like right. with like good style, I think Karen has great style. I think Mia has pretty good style. I think Robin actually has really good style also. 
you know, I think I would be a little more excited, but I don't know what disaster GNA are going to do. I know I'm being, I'm being petty. You get that every now and then. <laughs> I mean, I'm happy. I'm all for women businesses. They're trying to do something. Yeah. I'd be successful and they'll be, and y'all be like, ha, you see, Eldris, what happened? But, you know, yeah. I, I wasn't it really. How about you? Um, I don't, I don't know. I, I kind of really wasn't like taking it really serious because like, I, I don't know what ended up happening to Giselle's makeup line and I forgot that Ashley even had a restaurant with Michael. Um, it, it's weird. But to the overall like theme of everyone now has some kind of side hustle or whatever. I mean, if you got to find a way to make money, that's fine. You know, everybody has their own side hustles and everything. But it is strange the way that it. I feel like in particular this season, it's been so like in your face and and there's been like almost every episode is something about one of like their businesses or or their you know uh, endeavors and and all that. So, I don't know. It I don't know. I, I don't know what because, to make of it. Yeah. I think it's just because there's so so many rifts going on and there's so much division. Yeah. Like they don't co yeah. cohesively have like an argument or like you know, people are not talking to each other, so they have to insert some kind of storyline. So these are just fillers to me. That's a good point. Yeah. Hmm. Very true. Because we really haven't seen much of them coming together in any kind of real or positive way. Uh, yeah. Okay, so continuing. Wendy is busy preparing a weed rolling event with her husband, Happy Eddie. Except this was filmed before recreational cannabis was legal in the state of Maryland, leaving us to watch the cast delicately place oregano in rolling papers to prepare for the vague future date when they will be lighting up in their own houses. At which point, I am sure they could just look up a YouTube tutorial. It is puzzling in its execution. The only upside to this event is that the most is that most of the cast does attend, allowing us another chance to examine how their interpersonal dynamics have evolved. Candace escorts her husband, Chris, before quickly departing to go back on set, leaving Chris to contend with his first interaction with the women since last season's fallout, um, which he had to do alone. But that tension is eliminated quickly as Ashley, Giselle, and Chris all make a point to not engage with each other outside of pointed snipes in their confessionals. Giselle and Robin do attend, but they don't greet Wendy at her own event. And Giselle even highlights her outright disinterest in supporting Wendy's ventures. Meanwhile, Wendy continues uh, to keep the wall up with her relationship with NECA, who asks for a one-on-one -on -one in addition to her invite to her packing slumber party. It is unclear what green light Wendy's actually looking for. She claims NECA skipped steps, but now NECA is approaching her for a one-on-one -on -one meeting before a group event, and she is still rebuffing her. Uh, before we continue on to this little other tidbit, I, I, I have many thoughts about that whole interaction, but you go first. My, I can't believe I'm saying this. I know I've been riding NECA hard, guys. You know, <laughs> yeah. the other episodes that we've had. You know, yeah. I didn't like how NECA came in. Then, you know, Bravo did her a disservice because they didn't introduce her properly. So in these last few episodes, we're kind of getting to know her a little bit more. Um, yeah. And I'm liking her a lot more. And Wendy is officially <laughs> knocked out because oh. I am with this Zen Wen Wendy or whoever this rendition of this new Wendy is. I think it's yeah. very disappointing. I think it's very childish the way she's behaving. I love the way NECA approached the situation. She's still trying. She she tried when she went to Surrey and shut down. I think I would not do this. But she went to the event. Right. Olive Branch. She said, hey, thank you for inviting me. She didn't act like Giselle. She right. She again, saying thank you for inviting me. You know, I want us to have a sit down. Let's talk about it. And then Wendy was dismissive and she's like, well, you said I skipped steps. So I'm, I'm, I'm working towards, you know, something that's 
you know, kind of in your court. Yeah, like, yeah. I know it's basically like, I know I messed up. I'm trying my best, you know, to, to meet you halfway or even more. And she still manages to shut her down. I think is completely immature. I don't know how long she yeah. plans to drag this because I think at this point, if she accepts an apology, at least that part of the group can move forward. That's right. all that's needed. She, NECA could apologize to the mom, apologize to Wendy. I think the ladies would understand, not that they need to, but they'll be like, yeah, you know, all right, let's move forward. But I'm very, mm-hmm. very disappointed with Wendy. Man. Yeah. Very. Like, very. <laughs> I I think NECA's really trying. Obviously, she seems self-aware. She's new to the group. So it makes sense that she would try to make amends or that she would try to do some of the things that she's doing. Because let's not forget that Wendy came at her initially in a very negative way and NECA reacted to that. I also would like to commend NECA for not for not denying the things that she has done. For not denying yeah, I called you the B word. Yeah, I said <laughs> yes, I did. You know, that's something that I don't think most of the women tend to do. That accountability alone is and, and showing that's... right. It is showing so much maturity with Vineka that it by comparison makes Wendy look immature. It makes Wendy look as though she's not um the 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 one who's been here for the longest time in in, in their scenario, right? Because mm-hmm. Wendy has been there already a couple of seasons. So she's not a veteran, but getting there and and you would think she would handle it differently but I feel like she is choosing choosing not to and because of that the consequence is that NECA looks good is that NECA is getting the audience on her side it's not working in Wendy's favor I don't know if that's what she thought she was going to accomplish but I mean I don't see it going that way yeah, yeah, I don't know why she's behaving in, in this fashion, to be honest. I can understand her being upset. You know, hey, you call my mama a witch, you know, blah, blah, yeah. blah, X, Y, Z. I never want to talk to you again. Clearly, we have that with Giselle and Candace right now. I know. But at the same time, I feel like these ladies don't have the luxury of holding grudges like E does. You know, you have a show, you have an audience, give me what I want resolve it like have a problem resolve it move on and this is just lingering for way too long that's very accurate also because of the fact that potomac is not doing the numbers they're used to doing Mm -hmm. so you're absolutely right you don't have the luxury to do x y and z because you need to get the audience back to watching your show The fact that the numbers are reflective of how the viewers are feeling about the show now, and in particular this season, Mm -hmm. that's not good that it's all dwindling. And instead of reversing course to make people remember what it is that they enjoyed about Potomac, I think they're very much going in the opposite direction. For sure, for sure. Disappointing. Um, there was like a, an Instagram follower. I can't remember her name to shout her out, but you know, she was pointing out, um, the different viewerships throughout the different episodes. So mm-hmm. the season eight episode one started with like a million plus and we're, you know, down to like, well, not season 12, but I think her latest one was 10 or 11 and it was in the 600 thousands. So right. you went from a million plus people looking at you to 600,000. That's a significant drop. Mm-hmm. So if that's not speaking yeah. volumes, I don't know what is. If it's not speaking volumes to them, it'll start speaking volumes to Bravo. And then what are y'all going to do? Andy, look at these numbers. I'm going to shout this girl out as soon as I find her. <laughs> and uh, is, a, is a clothing brand. Oh, right, right, right. I kind of figured, but I just I hadn't it's heard of like it. like leggings and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. 
Okay, so continuing the recap here. Karen and Mia, to their credit, try their hardest to keep up the momentum in the show. Real MVPs, guys. Side note. Um, they squabble on the thinnest of pretenses. Karen is miffed by how Mia <laughs> rebuffed her last-minute invitation to Surrey County, but they keep up enough steam in their dispute for it to linger at both Wendy and Neca's respective events. The argument is silly, but it has enough meat on the bone to invite questions over the status of Mia's marriage. Mia has used this season to slow walk her inevitable split from G and the breadcrumbs she has planted seem to finally be coming together. Their tension is palpable. G left the Happy Eddie event on his own, even though the couple came in together. And to every confessional, Mia offers increasingly disinterest in the state of her marriage. In one of the more bizarre events between the pair to date, the duo sit down for a day date and discuss how they would navigate a hypothetical separation in the wake of examining the seeming understanding that Ashley has with the scourge. This is Vulture, y'all. Scourge known as Michael Darby. From G's perspective, they never need to divorce formally. They can file some paperwork from some sort of mutually beneficial arrangement and move on from there. The conversation is even more curious when juxtaposed with Mia and Karen's fight at NECA's event, where multiple rappers' names are thrown about in the implication that Mia is maligning Karen. Mia doesn't exactly disavow it, as much as claims that G is fully aware. Of course, we know that G has since claimed that Mia was seeing other people during their marriage and is now fully in a relationship with an Atlanta radio personality. If there's anyone who can give us hope for entertaining mess in the remainder of the season, look no further than Mia Thornton. <laughs> so before we go on to Vulture's Cherry Blossoms, what do we think about that whole situation? With Gordon and Mia? Let's start with Karen and Mia. Uh, first of all, that came from left field. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I wasn't even ready. <laughs> you know, like I usually brace myself yeah. for something. And she was like, let yeah. me tell you something. You know, and then the way they were just attacking each other. I'm like, this was too, this went from zero to a thousand real quick. But, yeah. you know, they're both quick witted with the, with the comeback. So I can appreciate it. One called her a trick. The other one said a dog with no bones. I don't, I don't even know what it is. Oh it was entertaining God. to watch. You know, I don't understand why Karen is so upset with Mia, to be honest. I don't want no secondhand invite. You know, I want right. to be first. If not, don't invite me. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm that girl. I'm like Mia. Don't, don't, do, don't do me like that because, right. you know, I ain't going. Not that my friends would do that because I have amazing friends. We have amazing <laughs> friends. <laughs> but, yeah, like, I don't know. Karen... All I was, I was pretty distracted, to be honest, with Karen's face. I know. I'm not being an atheist or anything, but everybody was, I mean, Giselle at the end was pointing out, you got a little refresh? Like, that's all I could see. I was trying not to. And I wasn't going to mention it, guys, but that's what I remember. Okay? Sue me. Don't sue me. But sue me. <laughs> um. I loved and was here for it because that is the Potomac we know and love. The interaction between yeah. Mia and Karen, hilarious, <laughs> especially given how at the beginning of the season, they started with their handshake, progressed to a hug. Handshake. And it's, yes. And, and so, like you said, they're both very quick with it. And I... I love that that sort of banter because it's it's entertaining, yeah. And they're not like I, I don't feel that they're being particularly malicious to one another. I feel mm -hmm. like by next episode they'll be fine. You know, they'll they'll eventually go back to hugging or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it was hilarious. I and and I one thing I will point out because Karen, my friend Karen, you know, we ride for you here. But you said to Mia at the beginning of the season, when you had your, your initial encounter with her with the handshake, no more putting out un, you know, substantiated rumors out there. And mm. what did she do immediately? Well, I didn't say nothing about you sleeping with a married man. Mm-hmm. Which, you know, that was like kind of shocking because Mia 
kept kind of mum on some things and didn't say. I'm like, well, I mean, I guess it's true. But Mia's always so forthcoming with stuff. She don't care. And I love her for it. She doesn't. She, she doesn't. doesn't. I mean, like, Gordon was there. So what? Then, like, they have no more ammo on her. Case closed. There's no more, like, arguments. Like, what do you say after that? Yeah, he was there, you know. Gordon knows. Hmm. And that is why I love any of Mia's interactions. You can't <laughs> come for her. Because yeah. she just lets you go be there and then you'll have to walk your own self back. Because she doesn't yeah. care. And clearly, clearly, as we now transition to the Gordon and Mia of it all, Mia left the relationship a long time ago. Let's mm. be real here. Whatever therapy she wanted to do may have just been a last ditch effort to claim she tried but i don't know that she really cared to try if i'm yeah. being honest maybe it was all for the viewers for bravo for soft launching her divorce right but i kind of hated that interaction to be honest the day date yes it horrendous. drove me crazy it went horrendously like yeah. you know we, we know maybe the history of how Mia and Gordon got together or there might or might not have been arrangements or, you know, money was involved, it wasn't, who's rich, who's not, I don't know. We we might have, you know, thoughts here and there. But at that particular moment, I'm like, Mia, girl, you deserve better. Because the way Gordon said, yeah, we can come to an arrangement. I want to be basically with a beautiful woman. It's not because I love you. It's not because, you know, we've built a life for, you know, 10 years together, you know, you're, I want to be with a beautiful woman and we can come up with an arrangement. Like I didn't feel the love there. Right. And I think Mia, even though she's a hard ass sometimes and quick witted and, you know, whatever, you know, we know that she's had some trauma. We've seen it on the, uh, on the seasons here. Um, and I think, you know, she wants love ultimately, you know, right. You know, we, we've seen her relationship with her mom and how that's gone. Yeah. Um, I guess we've seen the relationship with Gordon and relationship with Jacqueline. And, you know, we know her, her background yeah. history. So I think ultimately she wants love. And she said something like, well, I don't want to be chained to you if I basically don't love you. You know, like yeah. that's not even Gordon saying something like that. I thought it was repulsive. I can't believe he would. After 10 years, that's what you have to tell me. That I'm beautiful? Yes, I am. But that's it? Like, that's crazy to me. Well, I think we have to also look at it from the context of the style of relationship that they've had all these years. Like yeah. Mia mentioned at NECA's event, Gordon knew. Gordon was there when she was having her tryst or whatever with whomever. Mm -hmm. so, so the dynamic of their relationship isn't necessarily normal. And I think that... That sort of conversation has probably happened before or in mm -hmm. some variation. And I think it just came off the way that it did because we're not privy to that. Therefore, we're, sure. we're looking at it from this particular lens and it's like, oh my God, yeah, Mia deserves better. And it kind of, but here's the thing. My, <laughs> my theory is that she did the, the therapy to save face. But I think the moment that Mia lost the privileges that she had, the luxuries that she had, that's when she lost interest. Because sure. very much throughout the episode, she kept highlighting how she didn't have a nanny. Yeah, I did notice that. And I'm like, and girl, is that really that important to you? Like, It's important because that is what she grew accustomed to, right? <laughs> We're not, we're not people that would need or require a nanny. So it, you know, we, we're not going to like necessarily miss that. But someone mm -hmm. like her who's had the help constantly and who probably still needs to do some additional work on herself, considering, you know, the traumas that you mentioned, it, it does seem as though this is all like connected and everything has just been leading to yeah her leaving him and and i know that she's trying to make it seem about oh he just became so money focused and revenge and blah 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 and i don't want to be about that that's not important to me but having a nanny is important to you 
This is true. That, that's a luxury. Mm-hmm. That's a luxury that a lot of women don't have. And mm-hmm. that was probably the point where I no longer thought of like, oh, maybe maybe she does want to try to make things work. And it kind of felt like like the veil being removed of, oh, she's been doing these steps to ensure that the public perception is this, where the reality is she was done with him a long time ago. And yeah. I believe he may have known that because he didn't necessarily seem entirely shocked by some of that information. Mm-hmm. And again, because of the sort of lifestyle or the sort of dynamic to the relationship they had before, I think he just always assumed that as long as he was giving her the freedom to do the things she wanted, then she wouldn't leave. And, and, I don't the think, and the luxuries, right. And I don't think necessarily that he doesn't love her. I think he's an older man who doesn't want to be alone and has insecurities of his own. So that's why he wants to have a beautiful woman by his side as well. But ultimately, it's more about that idea of not having her with him. Because Mm -hmm. at this point in his life, he would just be a sugar daddy to somebody else, which I thought was ironic that they were talking about Ashley and Ashley having a sugar daddy when they clearly, Gordon and Mia, have a similar dynamic. But anyway, that was, it was a very like uncomfortable like scene. And their interaction, I feel like you could just tell it was, it was done. They're Mm -hmm. done. Yeah. I don't know. It's just, I mean, I also find it sad when people divorce. That's a whole other subject for another day. But I mean, I can see, I can see what you're saying. And and we know that basically the problems really started when, you know, she got fired or whatever happened with that. Company. The money trouble, she had to move, you know, all that was re- has been highlighted, you know, for the last right. couple of episodes. So as soon as she lost the status, she, mm-hmm. she lost the money, she lost the appearance, the, you know. The everything. <laughs> everything. Yeah. Then, then, you know, that's when the thick of it all happened, you know, all the problems. Or yep. They were always there, but it was just masked with all these different things, you know. Right. Well, so Vulture's cherry blossoms. Here's the first one. Lebe finally made an in-person appearance on the show at NECA's gathering. I know that I held Wendy to the fire last week for her reluctance to participate in the housewife's trickery, and my suspicions were confirmed. She is still incapable or unwilling to handle the conflict she and NECA have directly. It would certainly be uncomfortable, but it is past time to wrap this issue up, and that requires Wendy to confront it head on. The mm-hmm. next cherry blossom. When I am Lord and Master of the Universe, my first decree will be to ban over engineered housewives games. It's a contrivance with minimal reward. Who needs NECA to set up a game of Never Have I Ever for Robin to confront Karen over a safe Dixon family photo? <laughs> <laughs> And the last cherry blossom says Michael Darby's lawsuit against Candace was recently dismissed with prejudice. May that hopefully be the last time we ever have to entertain him in the public discourse. Amen. And that was the conclusion of the recap. Um, you know, I'm a little nervous seeing Leve there. I'm like, oh, snap. Yeah. It's going to be good. Oh, my yeah. God. Oh, my. like I was flipping out. Yeah. But I don't know. She looked like she had an attitude, too. Like she was ready to pounce. But right. we didn't get that from her yet. I don't know what, you know, the next episode has in store for us. I, here's where NECA, I think, fully won me over. That interaction that she had with Lebe and another friend before her, her party. And her friends are basically trying to get her to, like, not necessarily be against Wendy, but to not deal with certain things, right? Mm -hmm. And Nessa stood her ground and said, if I want to have this relationship with the friends that I have, and we have these same friends, I want to try to get past these things. More or less, that's, you know, the the vibe she was giving. And I thought like, wow, that is definite maturity. Because if my friends are telling me don't talk to the hell, I probably wouldn't talk to the hell. She she really won't. She'll take it to heart. She'll roll her eyes. She'll size them up. And I'll be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're doing too much. Relax. 
<laughs> you have to give me full instructions. You can't just say one thing. There has to be addendums, okay? <laughs> anyway, but NECA, NECA, I love that she very much, in this universe of housewives, has a mind of her own and is sticking to her structure, to her ground versus what everyone else is trying to impose on her. We saw that last week with Giselle and Sharice kind of trying to impose something on NECA by not kind of not wanting her to go to Surrey County, right, for, mm -hmm. for Karen's thing. And then we saw that this week with her own personal friends, Lebe and uh, the other woman that was there. And obviously they're warning her and, and and that's definite like a definite thing that a friend would do but i i like that neca does not seem to be afraid to again take accountability and to move past certain things because ultimately you want to be able to grow in the show that is why these women join the show they want to continue with it but you have to grow and you have to evolve i think mm -hmm. one of the things that has been amazing about people like karen and mia is that you've seen them grow but they've never lost the essence of who they are and that's why they continue to be the mvps of the show but yeah. then you have people like giselle that has shown no growth no evolution continues to move backwards and that's mm -hmm. why she's not getting the sort of public affection that maybe she had before and and that's unfortunate. And now Wendy is showing signs of regressing that are just very unfortunate because it, like I said, she's losing the audience here with this whole situation. She's the one that's been there forever. Of course, the people are going to root for her. That's what we were doing in the beginning. Yeah, sure. Now we know that things weren't exactly what we thought they were. You know, and I and another reason why I'm disappointed with Wendy was because we've seen the way these ladies have treated Wendy and they still treat her the same way. And, yeah. you know, they bas basically ostracize her. She's off to her little corner by herself. Yeah. You know, she's the outsider of the group, yeah. you know. So for somebody of the Nigerian culture, from somebody, you know, as a new cast member, you know, she's kind of doing it to her as well. But right. it's looking bad on her again. Like, you know, you're not forgiving. She's, you know, she's looking way more professional. Like she got her stuff together. She says she got her, uh, what is it? Her Beto sparkling wine line in, in, in four months. Like it was ready in four months. Wendy, we don't even know what happened to your three week candle. What happened with your business venture with uh, uh, Peter Thomas? What happened to your wine line? What happened to your talk show? Like, I don't know if Bravo is intentionally trying to make her look bad at this point, yeah. but NECA is getting all the points. And it, and it pains me to say it because I've been such a Wendy fan. I didn't feel like yeah. she fit in in the first place right. with these ladies. But now, you know, maybe she she's right on the money. She belongs. And NECA is the one that doesn't. No, the opposite. NECA belongs. <laughs> no, NECA belongs. belongs now because she's acting like the other ladies. Oh, I get you. I get yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it's, it's funny you say that too because like you pointed out, Wendy has been ostracized. Wendy has been basically ignored. But here's NECA making an effort to make her a part of things. Yeah. To include her to make amends move forward and wendy's choosing against that mm -hmm. and I, I don't really comprehend it it's yeah. very baffling um but I, the last my final thoughts on the show just overall um i thought anytime the the husbands the men are there i always just think it's so funny because it's such a such a vast difference from when the ladies are interacting the men just don't even care at this point mm -hmm. They're just off in La La Land, living their best lives. And yeah. I, I mean, good for them. <laughs> like, at least, you know, they're able to to be good and, and can hang out without drama mm -hmm. and all that. So, yeah, that was my final thought of the episode. And it was good to see Chris Bassett. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, chill. yeah. You know, he was just trying to be mellow. I don't know if we're going to see him later on. I don't know if Giselle's going to try to talk to him or Ashley. I was expecting Ashley, but she didn't. So who knows? And Giselle made that snarky comment about Chris 
oh, he looks like he gained weight or something like that. Why? Why is that necessary? Yeah. I'm like, that was just mean. And I'm like, Giselle, girl, you've been eating snacks too, okay? We all eat snacks. So shouldn't be talking. You know, life has been rough, man. Look what you did to that man with your rumors or your allegations. Okay. Right. Let him eat a couple. Yeah. That's all I got to say. I don't mean to shame people for eating or not eating. I'm just saying, don't me to Chris. You've done right. enough, girl. Yeah. Get a story. But that concludes today's episode. That was me. Sorry, guys. But that concludes today's episode. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe, turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of the, our videos. Also, please comment. Let us know what you thought of the episode. Mia and Gordon and Gordon. Gordon soft launched their, their divorce. Yeah. Uh, Giselle saying mean things about Chris. Uh, <laughs> Candace trying to act because we didn't really see her this episode. Ashley's right. pajamas. I'm still not understanding what that was. Mm -mm. but most importantly let us know what you think about wendy and Neca and this whole relationship dynamic thing or whatever drama is going on you know has your mind changed on wendy being your favorite or not your favorite or is Neca your favorite now let us know mm -hmm. but uh we also have social media and d's gonna tell you about that we're on Instagram and TikTok at Hear Me Out, D-N-E. So make sure you guys like, follow, share, and comment. We enjoy interacting with y'all. Guys, please share our video. We're trying to grow our community so your friends can be our friends so we can all be friends. Okay? All right. We'll see you <laughs> next time, guys. Peace. Bye. Bye.